Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and welcome to another episode of what I'm playing. Today I am playing a game that really has me hooked. And, and it's a good way. It's Into the Breach. This is on the PC. It's also available on the Nintendo Switch. And essentially it is a grid strategy based game that has a ton of depth, yet it's so simple to play. There's really not a whole lot that it takes to play this game. Like this game can be easily picked up in a matter of minutes, but the strategy is so intricate and deep that it's rewarding. You know, you learn a lot, even though the game has very simplistic mechanics. And that's what really makes this game excellent. I'm playing it through Game Pass, of course, because I'm a poverty gamer lately. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, Game Pass is awesome, and it's a great way to play various games like this. So let me go ahead and explain a little bit of what's going on action-wise right now. Essentially, you get three different types of mechs, and I'm sure you unlock more. I haven't really had a chance to delve too deep into it, but it did seem like there was other mech types that you can unlock. And they have their own different abilities. You have your melee mech, which is that big one that I have over on the right hand side there. It's a straight up melee attacker. It does the most damage, so that's useful. Uh, then you got the tank, which has a straight long shot, very handy as well. And then you have the artillery, which can hit multiple enemies at once potentially. And so these mechs have their own strengths and weaknesses that you have to kind of figure out, as well as you just have to kind of plan things out in the battle. Uh, fortunately, the developers give you a lot of tools to analyze what you're doing. And you even have the option to do a turn reset like I'm about to right now. If you royally screw up your movements in a turn, you don't like how it's turning out, you do have one reset per match that you can use, which is very forgiving of them. Uh, you can even undo like your moves. Like If you haven't attacked yet, but you just want to undo a certain move, you can do that. That seems to be limitless as far as I can tell. Um, obviously, it's only a one time. You can't like do undo twice in a row, for example, but it's still really useful. So as of this point here, I'm going to end up screwing up because I should have moved my tank over to where I can hit that enemy out of the way. But instead, I'm going to have that building get hit, which you don't want to happen because as you notice on the upper left hand side of the screen, you have the power grid. The power grid determines how long you'll stay in the game. If you run out of energy, it's game over and you have to start over. Now that's where a really interesting idea behind this game takes place because there happens to be dimensional travel that's involved with this game or time travel. I'm not sure which it is. Maybe it's some kind of mix of both. But whenever you lose, you have the option to send one of your pilots back through the rift going back to the past or to another dimension where things aren't screwed up or whatever. Um, and that pilot, of course, can take along with them their abilities and everything like that that they've earned, but everything else is back to square one, which kind of sucks, of course. But having that ability to use that upgraded pilot does make the next run a little bit easier, not to mention, of course, what you learn about the individual maps. Because even though this game does have that type of roguelike element to it, it does seem like it's a game that has set pieces for its matches as opposed to just randomized locations. At least that's what it seems like to me from uh, what I've played so far. You know, I've played through some of these maps a few different times and it seemed like the missions themselves didn't change. Uh, although certain little elements might have changed, the maps and everything like that for the most part has been the same. So you do get an uh, opportunity to learn. So it's not like a game like a roguelike where you're pretty much like it's luck of the draw. You get what you get. You know, you might get something good. You might not. That can be pretty frustrating sometimes with those types of games. And fortunately, this game doesn't have that problem, which is very important, especially for a game of this type. A strategy game where you have to kind of learn and you know just kind of learn and grow as you play through the game you know it doesn't make a lot of sense to do something like this in 
roguelike fashion just because it I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe, but it wouldn't really be a very good idea in my opinion. But I'm glad that they did it the way they did it. They do have some roguelike elements, but it's only to a minor degree. Uh, you really do have a lot of opportunity to learn from your mistakes in this game. So, that is of course really cool. So, whenever you finish through a match, you have the opportunity to choose the next areas that you want to target. You'll see like these little symbols like the stars, for example, those are reputation points. Once you liberate an item, an item, an island, you can spend those liberation points on upgrades for your mechs, your pilots, and so on. You can buy new weapons and all kinds of cool things like that. So that can be very handy. It can also be used to replenish the energy, of course, if you're running low on energy, because the game is over when you run out of energy. So that's something you have to keep in mind. But anyways, after you do all that, you'll go on to the next island, which will progress in challenge as you play through it. So it does seem like it's going to mix things up a little bit. So once you beat an island the very first time, then that island can be accessed at any time whenever you do a future rip jump. So if you don't want to start at the same starting island over and over again, you don't have to. You definitely have the opportunity to play it the way you want. Which is really cool. It's a really nice feature that it has. And the difficulty will scale accordingly. Which means there's a lot of combinations on these islands. Like this first island I'm playing on of course. Is the easiest island. But it doesn't have to be. It could be the hardest. Depending on the order that you choose to play the stages. Now of course that's limited to. Naturally beating the other islands first. Before you have that opportunity to choose the order that you want to play them, but it does add a lot of replay value because you have an opportunity to kind of see how things change and evolve whenever you advance in the gameplay. So really good idea on the developer's part with that as well. This developer as a whole, uh, they're called Subset Games and they just make kick-ass games. Now, as far as I understand, this and only one other game exists in their repertoire. They haven't, uh, they don't have a lot of games, but <laughs> the games they put out are fantastic. They're phenomenal. Uh, the other game in question is FTL Faster Than Light, which is a game I've played before on this channel. Um, I don't know if I have any videos of it anymore, uh, but that's definitely a game I want to talk about because I've been playing that again lately too. So that's a future when I'm playing episode, just to guys, give you guys a little bit of a hint. So kick-ass strategy, hardcore action, not so much, but it is such a fun and interesting game to play, and unlike a lot of strategy games, you can play through a mission fairly quickly. Um, usually, these matches don't take more than a few minutes to complete, so if you're the type of gamer that maybe has limitations on how often you can game, you know, like, uh, maybe you can't do, like, long-term sessions. This is a really cool game to play because you can play through a couple of missions and then, you know, save and move on with your, you know, daily life routine, you know. Or you can spend hours at a time with this game if you want. You know, constantly playing and going back through the rift or whatever, into the breach, as they call it. That's the title of the game, of course. <laughs> How brilliant, right? But anyways... It's just an excellent game. I mean, this game is fantastic. I'm probably going to end up picking it up on the Switch just so I can continue playing it uh, whenever I want it something a little more portable. You know, this is a really good title, and I just can't recommend it enough. If you love strategy games, it's a must. I should not have done that because I forgot the ability that I had in a previous realm of my artillery where... I was able to deflect damage on buildings. I forgot that I don't have that anymore because I jumped into the breach and I had to start a new run. So the civilians died. I lost an energy point. Whoops. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, I can't recommend this game enough. If you have Game Pass on PC, um, as you can see graphically, it's not the best looker. So it doesn't take much of a PC to run it either. 
And besides that, like I said, Nintendo Switch, cheap, 15 bucks. Definitely worth the money. I'm considering getting it for the Switch just so I can play it, even though I have it on Game Pass or PC. Unfortunately, not a Game Pass via Xbox. Would be nice to see this game come to other consoles. Uh, but anyways, I am on the last mission of this island. I've got to defend the corporate HQ, which means I have a boss that I get to fight, which is pretty cool. The boss has a lot more health than typical units, so you actually have to hit it a few times before it'll die. Uh, so it's going to be a big challenge. But I think I'm going to leave that to myself, and you guys can bask in the mystery of what happened after this fight. Or you could play the game for yourself. Maybe you can get a better outcome than I did. Thank you very much for watching. And till then, Down Phoenix out.